Hi, my name is Mark Biernot. I'm a monetary economist. And in this video, I want to talk about the abnormal brain of Vladimir Putin. I'm not just talking about some adjective people ascribe to him, but rather the abnormality in his organic structure of his brain, particularly the prefrontal cortex or the orbital cortex or the amygdala. These are three areas where potentially he might have a lesion, either clinical or subclinical, uh, that affects his moral judgment. Certainly, he acts amoral. And in the words of Gary Kasparov, he only operates in absolutes. Now, my hypothesis is the genesis of this might come from two vectors. And the two vectors are something that humanity has forgotten. Iodine and lead. We forgot it because it was a check mark. We did it, we achieved it, and we moved on. But Russia in 1953 did not. So be stay with me. Before I get into that, I want to tell you a story. Down in our neighborhood, down the street was a couple. They got along pretty well until the guy got into an accident and he hit the front of his head on the steering wheel pretty severely. I'm sure he got some money out of it, Florida lawyers. But afterwards, subsequent behavior was quite erratic. He even began to run around the neighborhood in his underwear his, and, and do other type of behavior. His wife eventually called the sheriffs on him and she left him, etc. I tried to explain to her that the organic structure of the brain affects behavior. It probably was because of his brain lesion. She didn't believe me. She said, like, he just changed. You know, my friend Ray at the gym, uh, who's a neurologist, he said, every single day I hear this. The brain is like a computer. You drop it, you pick it up, it looks okay, you turn it on and it doesn't work in some way. And people come into their office and they say, they're just different now. They've just changed. When in reality, there are uh, observable lesions in their brain. Now, in the, in the terms of Vladimir Putin, this is not necessarily an adult version, but a fetal development version. He paints a picture of his own childhood as, you know, his father was a Soviet patriot and his mother secretly baptized him. He was into spy novels and read judo. But the reality is something uh, a little bit different. And the point of that story was free will we have, but free will dependent on the organic structure and development of our of our brain. And I think we all acknowledge that. So if there is something amiss, off, that within the context we can operate, but we're not operating in the same way other people might operate. So that gets to my story of iodine. 19, I believe it was 24, May 1st, the U.S. started iodine and salt. And we had something called the Incredible Flynn Effect, where IQs and development shot through the roof. People will say, oh, it's this modernity and uh, the, the fast pace of modern life, even computer games. No, it was iodine. Iodine is not relevant when, you know, a mother is like six or nine months pregnant. It's relevant three months before conception, th uh, zero to three months when the brain isn't even formed, but the cells start migrating. If they don't have enough sufficient iodine levels, then the cells will not migrate and they actually can create abnormalities. What is sufficient? Minimum 150 micrograms to 90 optimal micrograms. I'm not a doctor. I'm a academic researcher. You can look this up yourself. It's one of the most, I'll go to Google Scholar, researched events in human history, history iodized salt. Soviet Union, 1953, Leningrad, zero. You can't get it from normal salt. What about sea salt? Sea salt has no, no iodine in it. You know, a piece of bread might have one microgram. Back then, now, now they add additives that shoot it through the roof. Okay, one microgram. We're shooting for minimum 150 uh, chicken breast, one microgram, three ounces of beef, three micrograms, peas, zero micrograms, apple, I think it might have an, a microgram. Okay, 
So there is no way you can tell me that she, no fault to her own, didn't have iodine deficiency. 900 days of siege during, uh, during the 1940s, Leningrad came out of. People were scraping paint off the wall or actually uh, wallpaper to get the glue and mix it with wood to make a pulp. Other people were doing things that are known for in, you know, the Pacific Islands, let's say. That's how desperate times were. Putin was conceived only years after that. And there was still a lot of starvation and hunger, including it. It was known in his communal building that it had that. So if bread has a two pieces of bread as one microgram back then, how are you going to achieve 150? Well, milk does have some. And milk, milk can have like, let's say, 47 micrograms. But it depends because in the U.S., of course, everybody is using iodine and, and all kind of additives and vitamins in the feed. But in Russia back then, they, they, weren't, they weren't even doing it for humans, so they weren't going to be doing it. for. So we don't know if it achieves 47, 40, 20. And I don't know if they drank that much milk because it was starvation times. And uh, canned fish is very little. Maybe herring has 30 micrograms. And there was probably a lot of herring on the Baltic. But still, I'd estimate he, he was running around 80 micrograms when he really needed more towards 200 micrograms of iodine to develop a normal brain, which he doesn't have. And that's manifest by his behavior. So that's a pretty strong hypothesis. You can look that up. Second thing is lead. Uh, the one thing I have is a scythe from Russia, manufactured 2018. I, I tested it the other day, just loaded with lead, okay? I've walked the buildings where uh, Putin lived. It's narrow streets. It's a winter city, all dusty in construction. The, the walls were made out of, uh, painted with lead. Everything was lead. The pipes you know, they didn't, it's not made in like Bethlehem steel, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, quality steel pipes. They were just throwing metals in to the cauldron, melting it and creating steel pipes. And I would estimate at least 1.4% based on zinc, at least, at least, probably more like 5% lead in that, in those pipes. So you had water vectors, you had uh, air vectors from the paint, but most of all, you had construction vector. There weren't a lot of cars back then, even though they were all lead and gasoline. But the whole city was dust and construction from the uh, reconstruction and reindustrialization of Leningrad. And the thing about Leningrad is the northern city half the year is dead because there's no trees. It's not like this lush green Florida, which is an oxygen pump. So no air circulates. Nothing happens. It all gets stuck in there. You're breathing lead from the air. You're breathing lead from the apartment. You touch the wall. You touch your fingers. You touch your mouth. You crawl on it. There's dust, old things, and from the pipes. Lead exposure causes lesions, it, and particularly it can cause frontal lobe lesions, just like these iodine can cause all kinds of problems and lesions in the frontal lobe. So the evidence is pretty strong that we've got somebody that had developmental brain issues. And then if we took a, a MRI, maybe we see it, maybe it's subclinical, but I'm pretty sure you would see something. How is that possible that he becomes a world leader because of his ruthlessness, right? And, you know, you could say other people, well, you know, there's other people like that guy Adolf. No, he never worked with paint at all either. So, you know, but I'm not talking about other people. I'm just talking about Putin. I know that he was with great confidence, iodine deficient in his fetal development. And he would probably expose to reasonable amounts of lead. The implication for this Ukraine struggle is if his brain is a crim criminally abnormal brain, he's not somebody to negotiate with or deal with or take on equal par arm's length transactions. He's somebody to be isolated uh, and, and dealt with like you would do with any abnormal other brain. You know, in this young Frankenstein, I don't know if you remember the movie, old movie, the guy dropped the initial brain, so he grabbed another brain off the shelf and he put it in Frankenstein and Frankenstein was acting really abnormal 
And he goes, what brain did you use? He said, some guy named Abby Normal. If you have an abnormal brain, if you have a brain lesion of this magnitude of developmental, I'm not talking adult, which can have some regenerative and you've got some you know, vascular uh, totality, other parts of your brain can take over. But a developmental issue like this, Putin operates in absolutes, and that's confirmed by Gary Kasparov, winter is coming, and it's probably caused, in my opinion, by this iodine deficiency, because the Soviet Union did not iodize salt until much later, and they still have problems with it today as they do with lead. So we want to make the world a better place. These are two obvious aspects that humanity checkmarked years ago, but Russia did not. And certainly the Soviet Union did not. We want to make the world a better place. We have to call it like it is. So my name is Mark Birnot. I'm an academic researcher. Have a great day. Thank you very much.